The 150 DSG is in high demand. The DSG is too expensive. It's rare. You can't get hold of them. The DSG automatic is the one to buy. These are some of the things that people say about the 150 DSG. And this weekend, I'm gonna be driving this vehicle, the bespoke camper van from Tamar Caravan Center, 150 brake horsepower, DSG automatic gearbox. I'll be taking it of over 600 miles to find out exactly what I think of it. Is it worth the extra money which you will actually pay for it? I'm gonna find out what the range is, see what the miles per gallon the vehicle returns, and ultimately see if this vehicle is better for me personally than the 110 horsepower manual camper van which I took out a couple of weeks ago. It's a weekend away, it's the King's Coronation, and Plymouth Argyle are up to Port Vale to see if they can be crowned champions. So let's get cracking and I'll catch up with you in a few miles to see how we're getting on. What a miserable driving day. But the more I've driven this T6.1, I've driven a few recently, the more I've actually come to like it. It's a nice drive. This van is much more comfortable than a T6, even if it doesn't have the comfort dash. It has a form of comfort dash in the California, but it's not the differentiator as it was in the T6. Although Vanex have just brought out an extra bit of trim, which I might have to try out sometime. It does look a lot better like my Vanex option does on my T6. One of my other complaints about the T6.1 was the fact that there's actually no place to put your left foot. But this, with it being the DSG, the automatic, and not having a clutch pedal, there is actually space. I can actually put my foot in between the panel and the brake pedal and actually have somewhere to put my foot. So actually, the DSG is better than the manual in that regard. Anyway, nearly the end of my day one of the drive, and I'm pretty happy with the MPG, which is returned so far. More driving tomorrow, and hopefully it'll be better weather, and I'll be able to provide you with my full thoughts on what I think about the DSG. Wow, what a change in weather. It is much nicer today. Horrible vision yesterday. Today, it's just beautiful. And today, we've got more of a mix of roads, not just got the motorways and the few country roads which we've got, we have today, no doubt, a heck of a lot of traffic. We're on our way to the football. Let's hope it's going to be a good game, and I shall catch up with you in a little while. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2022-23 Well, that was an experience. Plymouth Argyle, League One champions and going into the championship. Anyway, this 150 horsepower engine is my preferred option. I really do prefer it to the 110 manual, which I actually drove the other week, which you can have a look at my video later. I had some additional passengers for the game today, and one of them had previously said to me, I would never buy a Volkswagen Transporter. Well, actually, that opinion has changed. But first of all, we were driving along and he said, she pulls pretty well, but that was just one of the first compliments he actually made about the van, which he would never buy. Going on to saying it was really smooth, and these points are points which I just cannot argue. The 150 does pull well and is smooth. Don't get me wrong, it's not fast. It isn't meant to be. It is a camper van, but it does exactly what it needs to do, and it does it nice and smooth. Anyway, back to I would never buy a transporter. I got lots of questions. What's the spec? What's the options? Does this include the cool roof, i.e. the pop top? Maybe for him, as the saying goes, never say never. He was actually really quite interested. But what do I think about the DSG? You already know that I like the Volkswagen Transporter. But let's talk specifically about the DSG. It certainly is easier to drive than the manual, especially when you're in stop-start traffic. I really enjoyed the heavy town driving which I had in it, just the ability just to kind of relax and not think about having to change gear. Let's not bring in the driver engagement argument into this. It is a van, it isn't a sports vehicle. You don't really need to be engaged in the actual driving of it. You're not going to be driving fast. Your involvement should just be 
being able to relax, be in comfort, have everything you need around you. And as we've discussed previously, this vehicle has that. The Volkswagen Transporter does it with the Apple CarPlay and the heated seats and whatever, whatever. This one hasn't got heated seats, but that is something which I would spec. But that said, if I was buying the DSG gearbox, which I would if I was buying this van, I would make a slight change. I would go for the steering wheel with the flappy paddles. I do like a little bit of input. I do like to have that option to actually be able to change the gears manually. Now, now I know you can on this, you can slide it over into the uh, manual box so you can use the actual lever, but it's not as easy as just tapping on the actual steering wheel and keeping your hands on the steering wheel. It's just something which I've had in previous cars and I do actually like to have it. And I would actually change the gear knob itself. The one in here is it's just bland, but as you might have seen in a previous video which I've done, I did talk about some of the options which you can have and upgrading the gear knob for the glossy one does make it just look a, a lot better. That personally is something which I would do when, if I get my DSG transporter. So I think the 150 DSG drives better. It's much smoother. It's more relaxing to drive. And over the five, 600 miles, which I've actually driven it in, it's returned 37.5, I think it is, something like that. Which to be quite honest with you, for a camper van, which has been loaded up with four people, it's got a little bit of water. I didn't fill the water up because it'd be silly to drive around with all the water, but I just had a little bit so we could make some drinks. It had a full tank of diesel. It's obviously got all our stuff in and four passengers. I don't think that's particularly too bad, especially as we've been in quite a lot of stop-start traffic, especially around the football and when we've been in the towns. Now, this camper van in this spec is much more expensive than the start line manual, which I've talked about before. But that is purely down to the actual base van and the base van costs because there is a big difference between the start line manual and the high line 150 DSG. A start line manual 110 horsepower is 33,561, whereas a high line 150 DSG is 42,945. That's a big difference. That's a difference of 9,000. £384 in purely the base van. Now that might sound a lot, but this isn't specific to the Volkswagen Transporter. This is the difference which you will get in all the different model ranges. Other manufacturers, the BMWs, the Mercedes and the Audis. The manual gearbox is a lot cheaper than the DSG automatic. It's just one of those things. The more powerful engines are obviously going to cost more money. The better specs, better transmissions, better engines are more expensive. So is it worth it? I personally would say yes, but that's my personal choice. But the fact that people are saying what I said at the very start of this video is that this isn't just my choice. This is what other people think as well. People like the DSG and I am one of those people, but could this camper van really sleep four people and drive four people comfortably? Have a look in a future video. But if you haven't seen my previous video on why I think this vehicle is so special, do have a look at that here. Take care. Thanks for watching.